Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lisa Wallace, Minister of Discipleship and Mission, and I welcome you all to Wapping Community Church. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this sacred place. This is a vibrant Christian community, so please check your bulletin. There's a lot just about to get started around here, opportunities to get into the festiveness and the holiness of the season, and lots of opportunities to give and to share out of the abundance that God has given us. If you're visiting for the first time, we're thrilled that you're here. Please stop by the gathering room to my right and sign the guest registry on our visitors table and pick up a gift from Wapping Community Church. The flowers on the communion table are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Viola Waldron by Don and Sue Mickelson and Tribe. And they are beautiful. We have a couple of mission <coughs> moments, mission announcements and updates and opportunities. I'm gonna call Charlene first. Good morning. So I'm standing up here today to remind you that next Sunday is our annual Advent Fair. And we have gingerbread house making, we have wreath making um, with forms available for $5. And in addition, we're doing the live crush from two to four. So we need some people to sign up. As you can see, my list is starting to fill up. So if you really want that prime spot, you better get down there after service today so you can. After the um, crush, we're going to have the carol sing and the lighting of the crush. Um, and I know Sam said he's going to be looking for some people to help him bring the plastic figures out. Um, in addition to that, we also have an advent calendar this year that we're handing out. Um, on one side is a prayer card to carry with you, and on the other side there's a daily activity that you can do either individually or as a family. So if you didn't receive one last week, please stop down and get one while they're still available. Thanks, Charlene. Please join us next Sunday for the carol sing and the crash lighting at 5 o'clock and bring a friend or a neighbor or a family member. We would love to see you there. Ken. Good morning. My name is Ken Johnson. I'm here on behalf of uh, Christian Ministries and Outreach. Uh, I just want to give you an update about the Undy Sunday that we ran for the past three weekends. Um, God bless you all for all your donations. Uh, between the donations of cash and checks and the donations of the undergarments that we gave to Mac uh, totaled about $600, so that's, that's awesome. I took it over to Mac on Monday, and they were just thrilled to see me. I mean, you know, this is a blessing to get, you know, think about somebody wearing the same pair of socks for six months straight. To put a new pair of socks in is just a blessing that we do for those who are in, those who are in need. Um, we, brought, we brought this to you folks about six years ago. Uh, about doing the Sunday Sunday. And you folks, uh, you bought into it and you support it greatly and we, we, we thank you so, so much. Uh, Beth Stafford, who's the uh, executive director of MAC, was over at First Church on Main Street in South Windsor here doing a mission moment at the end of October. During that mission moment, she told the congregation there about Wapping's Community Church's Sunday Sunday. And there was some giggles and some laughter and everything, just like we had in here about six years ago. <laughs> What's on these Sunday? What are we doing? And uh, after the service, people came up to her after she told them about the great work that, that, uh, that we help with. And uh, people came up to her after the service and say, hey, that's a great idea. So First Church is going to start their own on these Sunday. And hopefully if First Church does it, the other 35 churches that support MAC and its mission will get involved too and be, they'll, be, they'll be pushing underwear aside over there, hopefully. <laughs> but, uh, if you've made a donation, either socks, undergarments, or a cash donation, there are these sheets in the back of the sanctuary and in the gathering room for your charitable donation write-off. So you can put it, attach it to your check and take it off on your taxes next year. 
I thank you so much for all you contribute to do, and uh, God bless you. Thanks, Ken. It's always a treat when Ken comes up and speaks from his heart. It is, um, well, it's one of the wonderful things about this faith community, and we really are thankful for Ken and all of the people who make that happen, and that's all of you, too. And I just wanted to let you know before we start our worship service that Reverend Mark and I are so thankful for each one of you. We love you. We hope that you feel God's love in our services and in worship today and always and know how very special you are to God and to us. I'd like to call Rick Love, who will come up and lead us in the beginning of worship. Good morning. <laughs> People of God, celebrate the gifts that enrich our lives. Bread, Bread and food, caring people of the gentle words, inspiring music and vivid colors. Celebrate God, who is the giver of all gifts. We praise God for knowing what we need and for giving even before we ask. Many of God's gifts surprise us. Like the hug of a child, words of encouragement from Life that rises unseen, even when the days turn cold and dark. Many of God's gifts fulfill us. New vocational opportunities, courage to stand up for justice, words that say, I love you. Many of God's gifts change us. Hope when despair rules, forgiveness when sin burdens, yes, when we expect it no. Now let our common words thank God. O oh God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we thank you for reaching out to us, touching and caring, loving and giving. And let our lives thank God. Help us, O oh God, to become more generous people, reaching out to those who lack, accompanying those who are lonely, caring for the troubled,
join me in the unison prayer. Come, Come brothers and sisters, let us follow the recipe of God. Let us bring the yeast and the flour. Let us knead the dough with our hands. And let us watch with joy while the bread rises. Today we celebrate our meeting with the Lord. Today we renew our commitment to building God's realm. Today nobody will leave hungry. Come, let us follow the recipe of God. The peace of Christ be with you. We enter into a time of prayer. I will get us started. Now come around with the mic. Just raise your hand and I'll come and you can share any concerns or praises on your heart. After each person shares, we'll say, God, hear our prayer. So let us be in prayer. O oh God of celebration and abundance, we come to you just on the heels of Thanksgiving, and we thank you so much for all that you've placed in our lives and in our hearts and all that you do in our lives and through us. God, the blessings that overflow in our hearts can't be contained, and they're too numerous to name. There are those that we can put words to and words and things that we can't put words to. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for the harvest time and the joy that you've put in us and all around us, wherever we look, we can see your victory and your celebration. Oh, God of compassion, we can also see you in places where there's pain or suffering or need or lack. We know that you, the God of hope, will be in all of those places and fill all those crevices with what brings light and joy. O oh God of clarity, we thank you for purpose, for ordering our steps on the right path, for helping us to be in the right places at the right time, for giving us clarity of thought and getting our hearts set in the right direction. O oh God of light, we thank you that you bring light into the darkness and that when even things look dark and dead and like they're just not doing anything, we know that spring comes and that you do great work in those places of darkness. Please continue to do that in our lives and the lives of all that we care about and all of the people in the world. O oh God of purpose, we thank you that you give us guidance, and O oh God of mercy, we pray that you are gracious and merciful to us. Help us to extend forgiveness and mercy and grace to each person we meet and each person we have met in the past and will meet in the future, that we may travel lightly and in joy and in good communion with you all the days of our lives. Make us to be the people that you had in mind for us to be when you first formed us and brought us here. Help us to realize that we are all your ministers and that life is sacred, that you are sacred and your handiwork is sacred and help us walk and see and breathe and be in that, that flow. And now God, 
Come and hear the prayers of your people. Oh God, please take all of these prayers, the ones said silently, the ones said out loud, and all the ones yet to be said. We lay them at your feet. We trust you and we thank you for your work of wonder in all of these lives and in all of these circumstances. May your glory shine. We ask this in faith and hope through the saving work of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. For, For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> this morning's scripture lesson is on page 951 in your pew Bibles. It is, however, only two verses long, should you choose to not look for it. <laughs> this is from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, and in my, my Bible it says, the parable of the yeast above it. And again Jesus said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. I imagine that this was a week filled with bread making and bread baking for a few of you. At the very least, I suspect any number of us had bread at our Thanksgiving meal. Pumpkin bread, zucchini bread, cranberry bread, rolls of all different kinds. I know I for one ate just enough bread at Thanksgiving that I was tempted to tuck away this morning's parable until next Thanksgiving rolls around. <laughs> Nevertheless, I stuck with the story today because it feels to me somehow like it fits on this Sunday after Thanksgiving and before the start of Advent. Plus, after hearing this morning's story, I think it's possible to draw some seasonally appropriate connections between baking bread and creating the realm of God. As you just heard, the one thing we can say for sure about today's parable is that it's short. But let us not make the mistake of equating brevity with simplicity because the parable of the yeast or the parable of the leaven as it's sometimes known is among Jesus's storytelling triumphs. It is a story that is mysterious and complex, insightful and genuinely wonderful. In the end it is short but oh so sweet. Before we go any further, let's try and sort out what's going on in this parable, and then we can move on and try and figure out what Jesus is trying to tell us. We start by making note of the fact that the woman who bakes the bread in this narrative is the surrogate for God. The woman represents a divine figure, and her baking work is meant to be seen as God's divine activity. But in order to truly understand this parable, we have to appreciate the magnitude of the task that this woman is attempting to perform. In two short verses, the story indicates that the woman mixed yeast with three measures of flour to bake bread. Three entire measures of flour, which would have been the ancient equivalent of one bushel of flour, or in modern terms, 16 five-pound bags of flour. 
By the time the baker woman finished mixing and stirring and kneading together the ingredients, she would have had well over a hundred pounds of bread dough sitting right there in front of her, not to mention a serious backache. <laughs> what we are talking about here in this parable is a professional baker, a woman who makes a staggering amount of bread, perhaps as much bread as all of us in this sanctuary combined made for Thanksgiving. And yet the symbolism of the story does not end with the baker woman. The lump or the pile of dough the woman creates represents the world. There's nothing special about it, at least by what we're told in the story. The parable doesn't talk about any fancy flour or any special ingredients or any specific instructions that go along with making this bread. What we have is simply sticky, basic, unbaked bread dough. And there is a tremendous amount of it, meaning that it's not easy to get a handle on this or to handle it in the first place. The yeast in this parable represents the realm or the kingdom of God. But we misinterpret the story if we assume somehow that the yeast and the dough are two separate and distinct entities. The story tells us that the realm of God is like the yeast incorporated in the dough or hidden in the dough. Now, as anyone knows who has ever baked bread, there is really no way to separate the yeast from the dough and still make bread. The yeast works inside the dough to create the bread. Even if it's theoretically possible to create the dough and then add the yeast at the end, I can't think of anybody who would choose to do it that way. The only plausible reason you would add the yeast at the end of the baking process was if you made a mistake and forgot to add the yeast in the first place. And trust me when I say Jesus was not in the habit of telling parables about mistakes. So when we go back to the beginning of this parable, we have a baker woman with 128 cups of flour in front of her. To that huge quantity of flour, she added the yeast, which she probably dissolved in water, along with any other ingredients this bread may have required. Then the woman kneaded the bread until the yeast was activated and she waited for it to rise. And finally, she baked the bread. From a purely practical perspective, there's nothing unusual about the baking procedure that this woman followed. <coughs> but Jesus was interested in conveying a deeper message. God created the world like a lump of dough. And when God created the world, God mixed the realm of God into the world. There has never, ever been a time when God's realm hasn't been part of the world. What's more, God's realm can't be separated from the world. The realm of God is simply a part of the world we live in. The only thing is that the realm of God is buried in the world somewhere. It's hidden from us. And we only catch glimpses from time to time. So our job, your job, and my job is to knead the world and to fold the world and to pound the world down and to work with the world until the realm of God becomes active, until the realm of God expands like yeast inside the dough, until the realm of God emerges from the dough, transforming this sticky, unbaked lump into a wonderful bread-shaped, bread-sized loaf ready to bake. If we understand the parable of the leaven in practical terms, and if we have an understanding of what Jesus meant when he shared this parable with his followers, then the only thing left to explore is what the parable might mean for us. To that end, two interpretations. 
To begin with, if the realm of God is hidden right here in this world, then it stands to reason that the realm of God is hidden right here at Wapping Community Church. And that surely sounds right to me. Wapping Community Church is full of yeast, the kind of holy yeast that seems to me to bear an uncanny resemblance to the realm of God. Look, for example, at the incredible generosity of this congregation just during this holiday season alone. Think about the undergarments we dedicated along with our weekly offering last week. Ken Johnson took four barrels of undergarments to Mac last week. All those tags that we are taking from trees down in the community room to provide gifts to children and families in need identified by, to, by covenant to care, not to mention all the shut-ins from this congregation who will also receive gifts because of our generosity. Think about the scarves we are collecting to hand out to people who come through to receive food at food share. All those gifts that we give to our sisters and brothers during this Thanksgiving and Christmas season, they're all holy yeast. Signs of the realm of God breaking out among us. And think about all the people giving their time and serving in myriad ways during this holiday season here at Wapping Church. All the people who watch babies and toddlers in the nursery, all those who teach children in the church school during pageant season, and all those who advise junior and senior high youth as they get ready to go caroling to shut-ins. Think about the people who walk through the driving rain at the recent crop walk over in Manchester, raising thousands of dollars for people who do not know where their next meal will come from. Consider the people who make beautiful Christmas music through the choir, the people who create beautiful property around this church building and here inside the church as they set up nativity figures all over our building. Think about people in the sacred dance group who will create beauty among us on Christmas Eve. Think about people who serve on boards and committees, making sure holiday ministries happen smoothly and effectively. The people who usher and host coffee hours and everybody who works behind the scenes to make the Advent Fair and the craft fair and the cookie stroll happen. And think about all those people who are making phone calls and offering prayers and visits so that church members and friends feel supported and cared for as Christmas draws near. All the ways people at Wapping Church are using their God-given gifts and talents to serve one another and this community and brothers and sisters outside our church walls, all of those things are holy yeast, signs of the realm of God unfolding in our midst. And the more we work at that holy yeast, the more we reach out to people in our congregation and in our community and in the state and in the world, the more that yeast will activate, the more this church's ministries will grow and expand, and the more we will knead ourselves into a loaf of God's realm right here in South Windsor, Connecticut. But here's the other fantastic thing about holy yeast. And it brings me to my second point. The amazing thing about holy yeast is that God is working on the yeast even harder than we are. So hard, in fact, that it doesn't matter if we occasionally get bogged down in church details or get caught up in various church issues. It doesn't really matter whether we get impatient or frustrated or discouraged every once in a while. It doesn't really matter because God created this world and this church with plenty of yeast in it for good reason. God isn't about to let God's realm stay hidden and buried in the dough. God is going to keep on kneading the world and shaping the world and doing things in this church to activate the realm of God among us. And on that day, 
When the dough rises and the realm of God breaks forth in the form of a loaf of bread, we will have God to thank first. Because, among other things, God is the supreme baker. Look around then and give thanks for all the holy yeast you see around you. And know that if we keep on kneading and working and praying and giving and witnessing and telling our story and reaching out together, we will have enough bread to stagger the imagination. Bread enough for each of us to taste and see the realm of God in all its glorious goodness. Amen. to God, whose activity continues to work and expand among us in the name of Jesus Christ.
God, we offer these gifts back to you with deep gratitude. And we pray that you would shape these gifts and each one of us into holy yeast, activated here and around our world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. out and take the hand of someone near you. And let us sing the repeating hallelujah together eight times if you have never heard this before. I think you can pick it up as we go along. Let us sing. Alleluia. Peace. Mm -hmm. 